Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another TheMMATakeover.com interview. My name is Keith Schillen. Uh Before we get into the interview, I want to apologize for our sound quality. We know it's not as good as what we usually use. Unfortunately, we've had some technical difficulties the last couple of days. We're working on fixing them. Uh, but I didn't want to cancel the interview that we had scheduled. We know this guy's very busy. Um, so we're just going to have to deal with the uh, the sound quality. I know it's, it is listenable. Um, it's just not as good as we usually are. So we apologize for any inconvenience. Uh, but let's get to the guest. Uh, today's guest has been a professional mixed martial arts fighter for six years. He has a 16-7 and seven record. He's on a six-fight winning streak. And he makes his UFC debut on June 3rd in Brazil when he takes on Yuri Alcantara. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Kelleher. Brian, how you doing, brother? Good. How's everything? Uh, great. What's cool now, man, from now on, I guess you get when you get the introduction, you get UFC veteran Brian Keller. How cool is that? Yeah, I, I look forward to hearing that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, as I know you're right in the middle of training camp. I shouldn't say in the middle. You're probably near, near the end of training camp, um, getting ready for your big fight. Uh, so, I appreciate you taking time. We know how hectic training camp is, how many hours you got to do. So, I appreciate you taking some time, speaking with me, letting us get to know a little bit about you. Yeah, I'm, I appreciate the exposure and the interview. Thank you. Thanks. So, um, like, one thing I, uh, I talked to you off the air, I said we always have to get to find out how someone got into mixed martial arts. Um, what I love about about interviewing people is everyone has a different story. You know, it's so one of the few things where I get to ask somebody that they, I have no idea what they're going to say. So, uh, let's hear, how did you get into mixed martial arts? Well, I'd say, like, when I was 20 years old, you know, I was I was a big fan of the sport. You know, I was watching the UFC fights, and, I, you know, I was watching, like, Chuck Liddell was one of my main guys. And, uh, okay. And I just I was captivated by it right away. And I knew, you know, being an athlete my whole life, I played sports growing up since I was, like, five, six years old. I played soccer, hockey. I, did, I even did some bowling. My mom worked at a bowling alley. Okay. And I was always... I was always like a natural gifted athlete, so when when MMA started, you know, I started watching. I was like, you know what? I feel like I can I can do this, you know. Like I, I'm pretty strong for my size, you know. I'm not a big guy, but like I wrestled around with my friends for fun, you know, and I always did really yeah. good, especially for my size, you know. So there was a gym that opened up like a few towns over, and I was like, man, this is perfect. It's right right down the block. I'm gonna try this out and see see how it works. So I went there. I started training for like two months, and then I got my first fight, my first amateur fight, uh, won by TKO, and I was addicted since then. I was like, okay. this is amazing. Like, the feeling of glory was like winning a fight was so unexplainable. Like, it was the best feeling ever, you know? So um, would you consider yourself the, the biggest badass bowler on the, on the planet? I'm for sure the best bowler there is in MMA. That, okay. That I could say. <laughs> Okay, so anybody anybody who's out there who's a better bowler who also fights, contact me. And uh, if you're in the same weight class, I'm going to try to uh, match make you against Brian, and the uh, the winner gets a uh, gets a new bowling ball or something. Yeah. Um, so we can throw. So you mentioned you mentioned you you did soccer, you did hockey, you, you did bowling. Is is there one sport where you were that was your best one? Um, the, I would I would say uh. Soccer was probably my best sport. I really could have okay. took either of the to a high level, you know. I mean, I, okay. I played uh, on the track team for soccer, which was like a high level travel team, and then okay. there was like the state, team, which I tried out for. I made the first two cuts, but I didn't make the last cut. But at that point, I was kind of losing passion for soccer. I was, you know, I was looking for something new, and uh, MMA really took over my life once I started that. All right, so tell us who you're training with now. Well, I'm, I'm based in Long Island in uh, Suffolk County. I, my, my main gym is Maxim BJJ. It's in Bohemia, and uh, we got a lot of great jiu-jitsu guys there. But uh, I, I'm starting to bounce around a lot more. You know, this year I, I, I'm over at Long Island MMA a lot. That's Ryan LaFleur's gym. Okay, and, yeah. Uh, Chris Wade, Bermudez, and those guys. And uh, Okay. And then uh, once in a while I'll go out to Sarah Longo's gym, and I'll train with Aljamain Sterling and, and get some sparring rounds in with him, which is helpful too okay that's good yeah yeah definitely get, get with the, one of the best guys in the weight class i'm sure that definitely yeah, helps exactly. so let's talk about this um you just mentioned you name dropped some some ufc names some pretty big ufc names what advice have they give you being that this is going to be your debut have they said anything like hey make sure you deal with this that and like what what advice have they given you 
Well, you know, I told them about, you know, I'm going to Brazil, obviously, that, that that's, a, that's a hike. And they just, you know, they just said, you know, just stay calm and stay focused. And the UFC is very professional. You're, if you need anything, just ask anybody. You know, they're really helpful out there. So, you know, that made me feel good. But to me, it's just about, you know, staying cool, calm, collected through the whole experience. I mean, I've had, a, I've had plenty of fights, you know, 23 pro fights. I know my opponent's very experienced, but I'm really experienced myself, so... Yeah, I know you mentioned uh, some guys from Sarah Longo, Jim, giving you advice and giving you, seemed like pretty positive advice, saying nice things about the UFC. I'm so I'm assuming you didn't get to talk to Ally Quinta while you've been there. I'm assuming he'd give you different <laughs> advice. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching him on the MMA Hour, I've been getting a lot of entertainment from his, his talk. <laughs> yeah. Of him. yeah, yeah. Oh, so let's get into it. You, you know, you get the call from the UFC. Um, I know you've told the story before. It's a pretty cool story. Um, I, I listened to one interview where you said you were swimming when the phone call came in, your brother kind of had the news, let the manager break it to you. Um, uh, my question is, is, is obviously you've been training, you've been fighting, you get to that point, you're on a six fight winning streak. You actually beat somebody who recently got a call. You beat Andre Sukmantai, who, um, we've actually interviewed in the past. Um, he actually, did, even though he lost his debut, he did pretty well in the fight. Um, I mean, that. That must have been frustrating watching a guy fight in the UFC that you've beaten and you're still waiting for the call. Like, how aggravating was that? Yeah, you know, it was, it was frustrating because you know I, I I put my 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 work in. You know, I beat these top prospects and you know I fought all the top guys around and I thought you know I I did what I had to do to get in. And then you you know you see someone kind of skip you in one line. And granted, you know I don't want to rain on his parade or anything. You know he's a he's a tough fighter and. You know, after I beat him, he came back and he had two impressive performances. And, you know, sometimes it's just politics and where you train and who you know. And, yeah. uh, you know, I know he trains with the Black Zillions and, he's, you know, his manager is Glenn Robinson. And, you know, that's, yeah. he's got good connections. He trains with a good team. And, you know, it's all about timing, you know. And everyone's journey is different. And, you know, here I am. And I got a, you know, to me, I got the best opportunity possible. You know, I'm fighting number uh, 15, I think, in the world. So, you know, this is my chance to skyrocket myself up into the top uh, top 10, you know? Yeah, um, so let's talk about your opponent. You're facing Yuri Alcantara. Um, the first thing that, when I look at the matchup, um, like you said, is you got thrown, I mean, you're right in the oven. You're right in there with the, a guy who's been around a long time. Um, the first thing that pops out of the page to me is the number of fights he has. He has almost doubled the fights you have. Um, you're making your UFC debut. This will be his 15th fight in the UFC. Um, so when you you know, you got a chance. I'm sure you've been watching film on him, studying him. Uh, so, two part question: When you see film of him, what impresses you? Where you're saying, "Okay, I got to be aware of this and this and this." And then on the flip side, without obviously giving away your game plan, tell me uh, what errors you see that you're like, "Okay, I can win this area. I can win this area." Yeah, you know, he's a well versed vet. Um, you know, I basically when I watch film, which I haven't watched too much, you know, I kind of leave that with okay. my coaches, you know, I, okay. I tend to try to focus on myself more, but I did watch a few fights, more of his few recent fights, and, you know, you could just tell he's a seasoned vet, he's very experienced, you know, he takes his time in there, he's not, he's not one of those guys that just, you know, gets in and brawls, you know, he kind of likes to take his time and, and throw yep. a lot of big left hands and left high kicks and stuff like that, but to me, I don't see anything special, I mean, I thought plenty of top guys, you know, the last guy I fought was a re really good southpaw, Julio Arce, and, and I did really well with him, and uh, and my, my brother, who, who also fights, Matt Keller, he, uh, he's he been in my corner and my, my main training partner my whole life, and he's a very high-level southpaw himself, so, you know, I, I have a good look, and um, I, I know what he, you know, I know what he's bringing to the table, but uh, he's got really solid jujitsu. He's got, you know, scrappy, good stand-up, but, you know, it seems like when you back him up, when you try to bully him a little bit, he, he seems to get a little tired towards the second and third round, you know, and uh, and I, I feel like he's kind of predictable, you know. I can see what he's okay. trying to throw, and uh, I believe in myself, you know. I believe that I'm, I'm unpredictable. I'm a little unorthodox. My style's tricky, you know, and uh, I think that he hasn't fought anyone like me, so it's going to be different for him as experienced as he is. I really believe in myself in this fight. I see a lot of holes in his wrestling, and uh, I think I could expose him there. Okay. Um, so we, in the media, one thing we always do before UFC cards is we try to 
you know, watch as much film on fighters as we can. We try to match up guys, break down on the film. Okay, I think this guy has an advantage here. I got this guy has an advantage here. And then we make our predictions. Um, one thing that is always hard um, when you break down film and you try to figure out is the intangibles. Intangibles you can't see on film. Um, the mental aspect of the game is something you can't see on film. Um, I know somebody once said, I love this quote. I can't remember who said it, but he said, uh, fighting is 90% mental and the other 10% is in your head. And so I, I love that quote and I, and I believe in it. I've heard top athletes talk about, you know, the mental aspect. One of the biggest stars in the game is Conor McGregor in I'm not sure not one of the biggest star in the game is Conor McGregor. And, and the first thing that jumps on the page of me is, is his, he wins mentally. Um, so now i got to talk about the mental aspect of the game. You know, you always hear guys talk about UFC jitters. This guy faced UFC jitters in his debut. I feel like this could be even worse because you're going in this guy's hometown. And this isn't going in and fighting a guy in Pennsylvania or fighting a guy in New York. You're fighting him in Brazil which is a rocking crowd. They're going to be chanting in Portuguese. You're going to die. Um, I, you know, There's not going to be a single person other than a couple of cornermen in your corner to be chanting for you. What are you doing yeah, to deal with this type of diversity? Um, I, you know, it's probably – it's something that you really don't know until you experience it. But like I said, like I've been – you know, I wrote a whole list of things down that I want to, you know, read every day to remind okay. myself of – what I, what I need to feel and think going into this fight. And, like, I just – cool, calm, collected is, like, my phrase right now. You know, like, I, I've I've had plenty of fights. You know, of course, like you said, Brazil's going to be different. It's going to be a lot more intense, a lot louder. But I've been booed my whole career pretty much. I mean, I've okay. never really fought at – you know, I've always fought the, the hometown guy. And I thrive off of that. Like, I, I'm motivated by the fact that everyone wants me to lose. Uh, yeah. That makes me want to win even more, you know. And – um I think as far as, you know, impressing the UFC, like, this is the best opportunity I can get to, to really show the world who I am. Like, this guy from Long Island coming to Brazil in Yuri Alcantara's backyard, and I'm going to come take him out, and I'm going to take his number 15, and that's it. You know, that's, my, that's okay. my motivation right there. This is my life. Like, I don't work. I don't do anything else. I train full time, and I, I, you know, I envision myself being the best in the world. Like, I know I okay. can be the best in the world. I'm going in there to prove it. That's it. So it, it seems like you're like embracing the diversity. You're embracing that you know the cards are stacked against you. Yeah, you know what? Part of life, uh, one of the biggest keys in life, I think, is acceptance and uh -huh. uh, being able to adapt. You know, adapt to change and stuff. So, you know, yeah, I would say I'm I'm definitely embracing the atmosphere. You know, I'm I I obviously never felt it before, but. You know, I'm kind of already trying to train my mind to just go through it and be fine with it and just kind of laugh it off. You know, it's kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Like, Uva, Uva Mojera, like, I've seen it plenty of times on TV. Yeah. Like, I just <laughs> yeah. like it off. Like, it's kind of funny to me. So I think if I just have fun with it, I'll I'll perform the best, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to try to, to uh, say it myself, but I was scared that I'd say something. I would, I would say it wrong and say something like, go screw your mother or something, and then I want to say it wrong. <laughs> Um, so, yeah. so obviously there's a lot of buzz about you coming in this. There's been a lot of buzz in this scene. I'm in New England. Obviously, I, I, I've seen tons of CES. So you were in CES for a little short time, and you know you've been in this area, I should say, this uh, southern New England, uh, New York, Northeast area. Um, so obviously there's a lot of people backing you, a lot of people saying positive things. But when we bring up your name the most negative thing, so let's just get right to it. Let's get to the elephant in the room. You're taking this fight on three weeks' notice, or three, a little, about three weeks' notice. You've had trouble making weight. Um, when we talked to Andre Sukmatot, uh, before he was in the UFC, I was trying to figure out who he wanted to defend his CES belt against next. I threw a couple names out. I said, hey, how about Brian Keller? He's the last guy to beat you. What do you think? He goes, I got no interest in fighting him. That guy can't make weight. He doesn't make weight. And he says he does it on purpose. He doesn't make weight, so he doesn't, so he doesn't have to suck his body, so he gives him an advantage. So my first question is, are you going to make weight? And then the follow-up question is, what do you think about, like, a comment, you know, the negative, that saying, I mean, when I look at your record, and I don't mean to be Mr. Negative, but you haven't made 136 in at least your last nine fights. No, I, I've made 136 before, but, uh, yeah, with the weight, I mean, you know, it's been an issue a few times. You know, it's it's not it's not about, like, me, 
treating the sport professionally, you know, like I, I eat good all year round, you know, like I'll have a cheat meal like once in a while here and there. But um, honestly, I've, I, I've been walking around at like 148, you know, this, this whole time. Like okay. I've been expecting the call to come on short notice, you know. In the past, I've been a little heavier, but I've never okay. been a big band. I'm just about uh, me learning how to cut the weight properly. And, um, you know, I, I don't have, you know, a, a nutritionist or anybody, you know, I don't make sure. enough money to be paying people to do that. So I kind of sure. do it on my own. But, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I think I'll, I'm motiv- more motivated than ever with this opportunity. And, you know, it's been a while. Like, I've made this life change, like, months and months ago, knowing that okay. this was close, you know, that this was going to happen. Okay. So, you know, I'm confident I'm going to make the weight. And you know what? It motivates me, too, because I know there's there's haters and doubters out there. But, sure. you know, nobody knows what goes on. Nobody knows what goes on in your training camp. You know, they can only just assume that you didn't try and you yeah. didn't care to sure. make the weight. Yeah. But, uh, sure. you know, either way, you know, I, I have to prove myself. So I have to go yeah. do it and then shut yeah. people up, and that's it. Okay. Um, you you mentioned haters, doubters, um I don't hate anybody I talk to. I'm rooting for you. I hope I hope you make the way. I hope you win the fight. Um, well, so, sure. and, and I hope you get a chance to, to shut up a lot of doubters. I really do. Um, am I, if I'm, if I'm being honest, am I skeptic that you're going to make the way? I'm, I'm going to be honest. I'm a little skeptic. Um, but I hope I'm wrong, and I've, and I've been wrong many times. So I hope you prove me wrong again. I'm not saying, I'm not predicting you missed the way. I'm not, just for the record, I'm not saying that. No, I I'm understand. Just, I'm just saying uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't. But I I would be pleasantly surprised to be proven wrong, and I hope you do prove me wrong, and I hope you win the fight. I truly I, – I just want to put that on the record. Yeah, man, it's just a, it's just a small, uh, you know, a small thing, changes that I had to make and make it a lifestyle. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very confident now that I'll do – it'll go smoothly and I'll be fine. And, okay. you know – then you know, then there'll be no more talk about that. But uh, you know, aside from that, my skills, my potential is through the roof. And uh, yep. you know, I'll say it right now. That was probably one of my easiest wins that fight, and I don't believe it was the two pounds. But okay, <laughs> um, so let's yeah. All right, I, I appreciate you saying that. Um, so let's talk about Brazil. You get to go to Brazil. How excited are you to get to go to Brazil? You know, have you have you ever been there before? Have you? No, I've never been there before. Um, I've heard, you know, I heard it's beautiful over in Rio, but, you know, I also heard, like, that the government and there's there's been issues over there, so I don't know how safe it is. But, like, yeah. I'm just, I'm the type of guy to just get in there, fight, and go back to my hotel, have some food, hang out with my, my family and, co- you know, coaches, and, and just enjoy the moment. But uh, I'm excited because it's going to be a whole different scene for me. It's going to be something completely new, and, uh, you know, it'll sure. it'll be an amazing experience. Is it, it? It must be cool to to think that when you wanted to go down to the local gym that was a couple, you said a couple towns away, that you go from there to now fighting in different countries and and fighting on the biggest stage. That must have been a pretty surreal moment. Yeah, it was. I mean, it's like I've been I've been manifesting this and and and, uh, and praying for this moment for so long now. It's just like realistically, you know a lot of people say, you know, like fighting isn't everything, but like, for me, it really is. Like, I, I don't, I don't really know what else I would do. That's, that's the genuine truth. Like I, there's no other interest in life to me that I, I can make a living off of, you know? So for me, it was like do or die. Like this was it. Like I need to be in the UFC and I need to make this happen. So it's really, uh, it really was surreal. And it's just like, it's, uh, it, it really lifted my spirits getting this opportunity. Now it's time to, to shine, you know? Yeah. Um, so let's, one thing we always like to do, we always get fighters to predict other fights. Uh, the main event of that evening is a huge fight. It's for the featherweight title. You have current champion Jose Aldo. He's facing off against interim champion Max Holloway. Who do you got in that fight? Well, I got to be honest. My manager, uh, he also manages Max Holloway. So okay. I got to stick with my I got to stick with my team there. But uh, in a, yeah. in a bias. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, Jose Aldo's a legend, you know, and, uh, yeah, and he's, you can that guy out. That guy's, you know, he's there to kill. So, like, uh, sure. it's going to be a close fight, in my, in my opinion, but I got to go with uh, with Holloway. I just feel like it's the it's a similar uh, storyline to my fight. It's like the young lion coming in to try to take out the older guy, you know. Uh, 
Yeah, I know uh, Aldo's been in for a while, but he's also made comments about, you know, going into professional soccer and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, maybe he's one foot in, one foot out at this point. And I know Max sure. Holloway's both, both feet in. So uh, I know Holloway said something pretty cool. He said a line like, uh, that's what kings do. They go to the, they go to the, they go to the other king's home and they dethrone them and take everything they got. And I, I love that's right. that. Play and conquer. That's awesome. That, that yeah. is a good quote. That's a great quote. Going into his town and taking what he has. Um, so let's hear your prediction for your fight. I need a round. I need a method. How you? How did? How does that fight finish? I mean, I'm not one to to try to uh, outpoint guys and go to decision. You know, I know it's okay. gonna be. Uh, diff- it's going to be different because it's my debut. So, you know, you, you never know how you're going to feel, like you said, with the jitters. But I go into finish, man. Like, I don't I don't want decisions. I want to get a finish. I want to knock him out or submit him. That's my goal. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's going to be a second-round finish. I don't know which way, but okay. I'm taking him out. Okay, so there you go. We have a lot of people who like to bet. Uh, they follow our site, getting betting advice. So you heard directly from Brian, make sure you parlay Max and Brian together for a big, big payday. All right. Uh, my very last question before I let you get out of here, I appreciate you taking the time. I know I know it's the last thing you want to do when you've been training and getting training sessions is talk to the media about fights. I know you probably just want to clear your mind, so I appreciate you taking the time speaking with us. Uh, my very last question for you, Brian, is have you submitted to the takeover? My name is Brian Kelleher, and I've submitted to the takeover. Uh, Brian, on behalf of the entire staff of MMA Takeover and all our listeners, I want to wish you good luck in this fight and all future fights, and I w- welcome you to the MMA Takeover family. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was our interview with Brian Keller. Make sure to check out his fight against Yuri Alcantara at UFC 212 on June 3rd. Also receive the best MMA coverage. Head over to our website, TheMMATakeover.com. That's Z-T-H-E-M-M-A Takeover.com. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and, and Instagram and YouTube. Thank you for listening.